Dr. Thomas Oliver, aka Tommy, both a Power Rangers veteran and a legend among the community and the series itself. He is often considered to be the greatest Power Ranger of all time, but how did he get to the legend status that everyone loves to talk about? Well, that's what I'm here for. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up everybody, Testa here. Welcome back to the video. And today I got a really interesting and cool video for you guys today because today we'll be talking about the story of Tommy Oliver. As we know, the original Green Ranger, the White Ranger, Red Zeo, Red Turbo, Black Dino, there's so many. Tommy has literally been so many different Rangers, had so many different forms in the past. And today we're gonna go through his character history, talk about all his different forms, all his different story arcs in the show and how he's grown to become a really good character, a good adult, a good role model, and all of that other stuff. Now, even though Tommy Oliver started out as an enemy in the show, throughout time and multiple seasons, he became a legendary hero and probably one of the greatest Rangers of all time, at least according to people who've only seen Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Of course, played by Jason David Frank, he's one of the most beloved characters in the whole series. Even though some fans may feel like his character is overrated, we still gotta respect the character and what it means for the Power Rangers franchise. After appearing in over 200 episodes, two feature films, and even a comic series, I just think it's really important to understand the history of Tommy and what it means today and the future of Power Rangers. So let's get into it. Let's get 500 likes on this video because it's Tommy. It's probably the biggest Ranger of all time. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter the Don Fuego, Instagram, not Don Fuego. Subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any one of my future videos. We got so many fire videos coming up. I don't want you to miss it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Heading back to 1993 with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Tommy started off just like any other high school kid. He was a freshman at Angel Grove High, but it wasn't long before Rita takes control of his mind and brainwashes him into becoming the evil Green Ranger. During a five-part miniseries, which by the way, probably one of the coolest miniseries in all of Power Rangers, we see Tommy face off against the other Rangers. Obviously, they would later defeat him and break Rita's spell while also keeping the green power coin so Tommy could now join the team, albeit not showing a lot because in Zoo Ranger, the Green Ranger died. So, that's epic. He formed a bond with the team, especially a romantic one with Kimberly. As the Green Ranger, Tommy had powerful weapons like the Dragon Dagger, which can call upon the mighty Dragon Zord, which literally rose from the ocean. Like, it's probably still sitting there today just chilling. Is anybody gonna talk about that? It's just a big Zord? No? Okay. It was later found out that Rita had linked the Green Ranger's powers to a special green candle. When the green candles burned out, Tommy loses his powers for good. In order to avoid the loss of the whole power, Tommy gives the Dragon Dagger and the coin to Jason, so he can use its shield and dagger for his own fights, which armored red ranger, fire. It's like the original power mode and probably the basis for battleizers of the future. Tommy would later come back as the green ranger thinks the Zordon giving some of his energy so he can retrieve the five power coins and parents that were stolen from Goldar. Tommy would continue to be the green ranger until eventually using up all of his power. Later on, however, Zordon and Alpha worked on creating new armor, weapons, and a Zord for their new White Ranger using white light, which doesn't really make sense, but basically it can prevent Rita or Lord Zed from controlling Tommy's mind. I just think white light is a weird name. The White Ranger powers are given to Tommy, and with that he gains the Tiger Zord and Saba, which like the Dragon Dagger controls the sword, but Saba literally talks. It's a talking sword. It's, it's really weird. Zordon also promotes Tommy to the leader of the team. He even fought the Green Ranger at one point. It was like like an evil clone of Tommy, and then they defeated him, and then Tommy's clone went to the past. So technically, is Tommy like the great 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 grandson of his clone, his ancestor? It's weird. It's really weird. Tommy would stay as the White Ranger to the end of Mighty Morphin, later on gaining the powers of the Falcon Power Coin to use his Ninja Ranger form, and the Falcon Zord, and also the White Shogun Zord, which he shared with both Kimberly and Cat. Cat obviously becoming Tommy's new love interest later on. In Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers, Master Vile showed up and turned the Rangers into little kids. 
So, Tommy and the other rangers had to go on an adventure to get the fragments of the Zeo crystal so they can return to normal. Tommy's adventure led him to a Native American village, where he was assisted by a wise sage named Trueheart. Remember this for later, as it's very important to Tommy's past. During Zeo, Master Val flees and Zoran gives one of the Zeo crystal fragments to each of the rangers, making them the new Zeo rangers. Tommy stays as the team leader, now becoming the Red Zeo Ranger, now with new weapons and zords. Throughout Zeo, Tommy would later be brainwashed by the Machine Empire, heartbroken by Kimberly, find his long lost brother, David Trueheart, and later get with Catherine. Literally, Tommy went through so much in Zeo, they had a whole arc about him and his brother and Tommy's actual roots as a Native American, but his brother just kind of disappears. We only saw him for a few episodes. It's like I said, everything in this story is very weird. During Turbo, after the end of the battle with the Machine Empire, Tommy stays on for a little bit longer to lead the Power Rangers after they get their Turbo powers to fight the new villain, Divatox. Tommy this season is a lot more different than he was in previous seasons as he becomes kind of antisocial. Now, with a new gain interest in cars, he began to spend a lot of time both on the racetrack and with the cars itself even missing his own graduation. Who does that? Tommy and the other Rangers obviously left for college later on in Turbo, and Tommy toasts GJ as his successor. After Turbo, however, Tommy goes to college. Which college? MIT, to study paleo paleo paleontology. I'm bad, at, I'm bad at saying words. Tommy would later assemble a team of former Red Rangers to fight the remnants of the Machine Empire during Wild Force in Forever Red. But just a few years later, Tommy would later go to a new town, Reefside, and become a science teacher. That's when three detention students discover Morph is designed by himself and Haley Zichter to become the Dino Thunder Rangers with the brand new use of the Dino Gems, later becoming the Black Ranger himself. And he did that by fighting previous versions of himself in his head while he was in a coma. Also, Tommy was stuck morphed for a lot of the season also. Like I said, Weird, obscure, confusing, yes. Tommy would later fight old friends from college and paleontology trips, such as Anton Mercer, who became Mezagog, and Terrence Smith, who is now Zeltrax. But after Dino Thunder, this is when Tommy really settles down and just relax. We saw him come back as SBD in that team up, but he really just chilled out for like 10 years. Tommy Oliver would later be visited by the Hyperforce Rangers in the next year of 2005, when Thrax, now the leader, would be there to try to revive Mezagog out of Dr. Mercer. That was until Super Megaforce, when Tommy leads all the previous Power Rangers in the legendary battle against Emperor Mavro's Exborgs. The Hyperforce Rangers would also be there in the legendary battle, and Tommy Oliver was the one that helped Marv and the other Hyperforce Rangers to hide so that they wouldn't mess up the timeline. Years after that, he returns in Super Ninja Steel, now with the Master Morpher, which encompasses every single one of his previous powers. I made a whole video about the Master Morpher. Go check it out, icon on your screen, link in the description. Y'all know the drill. In Super Ninja Steel, he fought Lord Draken's evil ranger clones. There was even an evil robot version of himself. But now after that, that's when Tommy really starts to settle down. Him and Kat got married, and they have a kid called JJ. And that's when Soul of the Dragon comes in. Years and years and years later, probably after the time of SPD. Tommy is finally retired and has one more battle before giving his son JJ his dragon shield, which JJ now adds to his arsenal as the new SPD Green Ranger. And Tommy and Kat and JJ, they just live happily ever after. I feel bad for Kimberly though, not gonna lie. I hope she's doing okay. Anyways, guys, that's it for the history of Tommy Oliver. This was a really weird story. Guys, I want to know your comments and opinions down below. What was your favorite Ranger form in Tommy? And what was your favorite Tommy moment throughout history? Let me all that know in the comments down below. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for supporting every single one of my videos. I'm going to see you guys next time. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Tiron Fuego, Instagram, Nanton Fuego. Subscribe, ring the notification bell. E-Squad forever. I love y'all so much. Have a great day. And of course, and as always, stay awesome, everybody. I, I still need to walk over there to, to do the thing. But I hope you guys have a good day. You know, it's morphin' time. Morphin' nominal. Okay.